I was raised in a military home. So I, yeah. I respect it. I understand it, but I was often alone when my dad would deploy. Um, so I want to hear because there's this, this difference between when you got out and the time frame, obviously of this 2017 encounter, mm -hmm. but Amanda, as you were on this journey, how like deep was your relationship with the Lord? I think there's a lot of women I have conversations with that say like, I'm hard after my faith. I'm hard into a relationship with the Lord and my husband, my spouse is not. How did you witness to him? How did you, you know, you said you went to church, Brandon, you got saved when his family was there, like all of this stuff with her. I want to hear that side of your story. Yeah. So I grew up Baptist um, and my personality is very much like, I'm a go-getter. Like you tell me what to do. I'm going to get it done. I love like, a, you know, a checklist. I want to get things done. And so that's really how I viewed my relationship with God. It was like, okay, went to church, check. Like I'm a good girl now, you know, yep. got up early, did my devotion, check. And so like, there really wasn't this depth and relationship that I had with Jesus. There just wasn't. It was very surface level. Like I would sing the songs. I know the Bible. I've read lots of devotions and stuff, but it never really got in me and in my spirit. And so when Brandon had that encounter in 2017, I'm like, what is happening? Like, what are you talking about? You know, he's talking about being filled with the spirit and being set free from things. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, like, Called her bawling my eyes out at two o'clock in the morning on the way home from this event, you know, and she's like, is this good or bad? Like, what's happening? Yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> she's like, are you OK? And I was just so full of joy that it was just like, you know, the Holy Spirit just, you know, just, you know, just came over me in a way that I literally just could not, you know, control my emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it was just like this empower. I feel like for both of us, it was this empowering, impactful, eye-opening experience that happened to me first and created, and I know you'll probably want to talk a little bit more about who I was the day that I went to that event and then who I was when I came home, you know, because of course anybody can share their testimony, but somebody who lives with the person and sees immediately, oh, yeah. you know, transformation. Um, I feel like for me, that's validation and confirmation and a testimony, you know, and absolutely. Um, but yeah, just uh, I feel like what happened to me, God did for both of us. Yeah, yeah that's so good. I, and so when, yeah. when it happened, it it then had me like, OK, what's going on? You know, yeah. and, and it op really it opened up this whole new spiritual spiritual world that like we weren't seeing, you yeah. know, and we weren't experiencing and we weren't having the ability to participate in really. Yeah. And so that really changed both of us. And so ever since then, like we have just had this deep connection, you know, meaningful relationship with the Lord. And it's so beautiful. And, you know, I think about our business, you know, and I think about like, they would always talk about marketplace ministry. And, and it's like, when, when the scales are removed from your eyes, mm -hmm. you see that it really is about helping people. Yeah. We yeah. just so happen to get paid in the process. Right. But we have the ability to impact so many people. And with our specific business, we have had multiple pastors tell us like, man, you guys have the ability to reach so many more people than I do. Yeah. And it's humbling and it's a great responsibility. And it's such an honor that God would give us the ability to run a business and in turn, get into people's lives and help them change truly change. It's a beautiful thing. Well, what I am knowing and hearing, especially comparative to what this pastor is saying, is the revelation that a lot of people might not ever walk into church, right? Mm -hmm. Especially you're not seeking yes. it. So Brandon, you are going after success still. And you had mentioned a bit about like what you thought success was and how money was associated to that. And then you get into this space and the Holy Spirit just wrecks you in all the best ways. And it transitions your ideas. This is something I've been holding on to since our conference last year from success to sustenance and yeah. sustenance being everlasting and success being wavering. 
and what is success even and yeah. what is this idea of wealth versus rich and um, understanding this and, and watching people take on this own new lens because really when you take off the scales like you're saying which is a biblical reference for those that don't know it this mm -hmm. awakening that transpires what you see with your natural eye is through the lens of the spirit and so what people are hungry for which often is this idea of success this money like i want to grow my business and we get to see that they're growing and wanting this thing out of a place of trauma out of a place of heartache out of a place of trigger like all of these other layers of self and so i know that you guys probably have some wild testimonies of people who have been transformed outside of the health industry, but in the health industry, right? Yeah. yeah. Share some of those. Yeah, so I mean, I'll share the most recent. So uh, we have just an incredible, I don't use any names, obviously out of That's respect, true. but you know, we have an in incredible uh, couple that God has brought into our life, um, you know, through the the business and the industry that we're in. And, um, you know, we've, we've always had a great relationship and they've created some really good success. You know, it's been amazing to watch them uh, you know, replace an income, you know, create more time with their family, become entrepreneurs, you know, they were stuck in careers before and now they're doing their own thing and they've got a little bit more freedom, yeah. you know, which is so cool. But, uh, God gave us the opportunity to share our testimony with them years ago. And it was kind of, you know, one of those promptings from the Holy spirit where it felt kind of awkward, but, um, I always try to remind myself that delayed obedience is disobedience. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, I knew that I was supposed to, but I was like, how is this going to fit? <laughs> and good. so funny enough, you know, the conversation actually went there Yeah. and we didn't force it to go there. So and good. so, you know, I was able to share the a more detailed version of the testimony that I just shared with you about that business event that I went to and how I was set free. And, you know, my life was transformed and I started seeing the world through a new set of eyes. And, you know, all of the things that were missing in my life were then filled you know, not that as Christians, as spirit filled believers, we don't still struggle with things. Sure. The struggle is promised, obviously. But now we just know the ending. We know the real promise, you know. And so um, so it's wild because it almost felt like it fell on deaf ears. Yeah. You know, but that was a seed planted. And these same people here recently went through a challenging season that would end most marriages. Mm -hmm. 